Hey, hey hi. hi. How are you? Hello. Good, good. I don't know what you signed up for. Neither do I. <laughs> I hope nothing very scary. Yeah. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a Women's Day special podcast. Today with us, we have two incredible women leader from Incred Group joining uh, Rano Verma, who is MD for our debt capital markets business, and Radhika, who heads Group Strategic Marketing and Communication, and she is head of program for Incred Wealth. Knowing two of them, uh, this is going to be an incredible conversation with both of them, as we are going to talk about uh, the challenges, the the experience and insights all aspects of your life okay. so welcome rano welcome radhika and thank you so much for taking out time today so starting with rano you first uh, for the young girls out there uh, who will be watching and listening to this podcast could you please share with us uh, more about your early life and did you envision this future career back then so we'd like to start with your journey first okay hi uh, thank you so much for having me here um, so if i talk about my earlier days um, i was this pampered younger child of my parents um, and i was extremely passionate about studying uh, that does not mean that i had any huge ambitions because the only thing that i wanted to do in my life was to get married and have children <laughs> <laughs> however my parents were very progressive for their generation so they wanted that their daughters should be educated and should be earning before we got married so i literally was left with no option but i had to do an mba post college uh, at the end of my first year of mba so i loved advertising as a subject so i had a fantastic job offer from this advertising company oh wow <laughs> and um, I went back and told my parents about the same and they put their foot down and insisted that I should pursue my majors in finance. Oh. So with a very heavy heart I did the same and at the end of second year during the placement week I applied for only one NBFC and uh, when I went for the group discussion and interview uh, during the interview the MD of the company actually asked me he said uh, uh, Mrs. Bakshi I was Bakshi then and uh, Miss Bakshi um, tell me one thing uh, why were you so disinterested you know through the entire GD and you spoke nothing so I said sir may I please request you for one thing he said what is it I said please don't give me this job okay uh, fortunately or unfortunately I was the only one selected for that job. oh my god okay so uh, for two months after that I read a lot of share application forms and FD oh. forms and um, I kept my eyes open by having numerous cups of coffee throughout the day because <laughs> I thought it was really boring and I kept thinking where have I landed up and I really don't want to work uh, in the third month I think my boss realized that um, you know she'll run away so let me just put her on rotation so he said why don't you go into the dead trading room uh, the minute I stepped in I loved the vibe, I loved everything about debt trading and I realized that was my calling. Yeah. Uh, to this date, every day I feel the same excitement when I walk into my debt trading room. So well, back then did I actually think I would be doing this? <laughs> Absolutely no. <laughs> Okay. Wow, and I think it's interesting that you said advertising. I should tap into you more for marketing now. Absolutely, <laughs> now I'm that always I know. ready. It just may happen now. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's very incredible. Like you know, you should listen to your calling, right? Absolutely. So coming to you, Radhika, uh, tell us more about how how it started and how you got here. So I think uh, unlike maybe what Rano shared, I have probably had the most non-linear career path to ending up where I am today. Uh, but I think it's exactly where I wanted to be. If if somebody had asked me back then, you know, what do you want to do? Like, yes, marketing, like you mentioned, advertising. Marketing was something that I always wanted to, you know, uh, be working in uh, and dabbling in. Uh, but as um, it happened back in the year 2000, I think technology and IT sector <laughs> was the place to be. And like most people that age, I wanted to go abroad. 
and uh, so it seemed like the most logical choice so the first four and a half years of my career I actually worked for uh, IT company uh, Tech Mahindra uh, which was called Mahindra British Telecom back then mm -hmm. and worked as a software engineer with no engineering degree <laughs> but, but a commerce graduate yeah. um, and uh, it was fantastic from the perspective I think um, you know just your foundational um, skills in mm -hmm. thinking in a structured manner um, handling a team very early in your you know career I think those opportunities are amazing uh, in the tech industry so I think uh, one tip for you know anyone uh, who's just starting out is definitely consider uh, IT you know as, as a stepping stone towards your professional journey uh, and of course you get to backpack and I got to work in the UK and you know all of that happening when you're so young is, is a lot more fun than later yeah, in life sure. and uh, then I said okay so now I need to do my MBA learn business uh, definitely specialize in marketing and so I chose uh, NUS Singapore and I did my MBA there and thereafter again I think you know just like you said um, uh, I think just being open about never saying never to any opportunity uh, because I hated banks right and I mean being <laughs> being somebody who's inclined towards marketing and creative yeah. thinking I had nothing to do with finance I didn't want anything to do with finance my my parents were bankers right so therefore like banking was the most uncool thing <laughs> to be associated with but as it happened I still attended a, a career talk of this bank which had come on campus and I discovered that they had a particular team that handled customer segments okay. um, and particularly in the affluent banking space mm -hmm. And I found that role so amazing because it essentially meant you're looking at a customer segment end to end and it's essentially marketing, right? Because you're looking at um, influencing the entire organization, Absolutely. various functions to do the right thing for the customer segment, develop the value propositions, work with the marketing team to, you know, enhance the brand identity. So all of that, my, my basics in marketing and customer segment uh, value delivery were laid down in a bank, right? So that's when my career moved into BFSI and I worked with OCBC Bank, thereafter came back to India, worked with HDFC Bank in uh, heading the preferred banking program. Um, then I took a sabbatical for two years um, uh, when I was when I had my baby. Luckily for me, I, I, I got in cred just before COVID happened <laughs> and I think rest is history. So after joining Incred, then you know, Incred being Incred just offered, asked me to take on marketing as yeah. as an entire role. And imagine, so you know, you come the full circle. But I think it's so important to just uh, sometimes go with the flow, right. um, never say never, and uh, be open and do everything to your hundred percent. That's so true. <laughs> you should be open to what you want to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So moving on, our today's topic is on the evolution of women's superpower. The world has changed a lot, right? There is a lot of change, the way we invest today, the economy is booming, the technology is changing and many more things are happening in the market, right? So do you feel more empowered than the previous generation? Uh, would you suggest some interesting tips for, you know, the young girls out there in their 20s and those who are in 30s and 40s? So Rano, we would like to know more about that. So, um, yes, uh, I do feel uh, women today are far more empowered because of the things you said. However, I also believe that this empowerment comes from the hard work of many, many women, uh, you know, uh, for generations together, hmm. be it the mother who encouraged her daughter to get educated and go out and work, be it the teacher who pushed the girl child again to get educated and motivated her in every possible way, be it the men mentor, uh, it could be a man or a woman, who encouraged women to be out there in the open, uh, find themselves, you know, and perform to their best capacity. So I think this empowerment is that we feel today is the hard work of many, many, many people. Um, well, if I talk about um, the younger generations, um, for women in 20s, I would say, um, do not have a mental block. Just go out there and experience everything and then maybe you will know what is your calling and you naturally will pursue your calling. Also, uh, it's very important at that age to find a mentor. 
this could be a person you look up to who's your idol who will actually help you find the right path so i feel finding a mentor is extremely important in the initial years for the women in 30s i think it is an extremely difficult time uh, you know when you're managing family and work especially as babies at this age can be much younger um, so the best is to seek help you know don't refrain from asking help when you need it and um, also all the goodwill that you built in through your hard work in your 20s you should try and encash in on all the opportunities that come your way this is for women in 30s for women in 40s i think by this time most of the women in their 40s would be pretty senior right. and this is the time to empower the younger generations you know um, mentor them give them the wings to fly and so i think women in 40s need to be more gracious uh, mm. i would here like to speak about the women in 30s so when i had my children i actually took a sabbatical of 7 years and then wow wherever i worked uh, and i was pretty lucky i always uh, asked for flexi timings of work so i would work till 4 o'clock because otherwise the guilt of being a working mom would have been too much uh, but because i worked till 4 from 9 to 4 i never had conversations with anybody on my desk because all i was doing was working i would get back home and again post 7 o'clock try and see which were the trades for the next day so it was far more work for me than the people sitting on the desk for those 8 hours but i think negotiating flexi hours um, worked really well for me so those were quite interesting especially you know having a mentor and you know asking for help at the age of 30s right i especially think that uh, learning sense, from yeah. this Okay so moving to Radhika to you uh you have any suggestion you have you want to add any thoughts yeah i think uh, i think what rano said specifically for the you know age groups but i think one thing which which would i think apply no matter what age you are is is definitely um i would say just be yourself right, right. uh don't let stereotypes define what is right what is not so even if you're a mom in your 30s and you know like when we took a sabbatical there were so many different views from Absolutely. people that oh why are you doing it to uh, oh that's a great decision but i think uh, in the end it should just be about are we truly happy doing what we want to do right, right. and the decision has to be solely ours so i think it's very important to understand what we really want right and and dive deep and introspect on that always um secondly have your girl gang at hand right absolutely i, I, I think yeah, yeah yeah so uh, you know no matter what age like for example even today i'm very close to my you know college friends and we get together we go on holidays uh, very important to have that group of girls uh, women who stand by each other let you act goofy and you know just let went and you know let your head down um and thirdly i would definitely say um um your your family right so your i think for me it's my mom and my sister um who always stood behind me choose your partner wisely <laughs> most important <laughs> right so uh, all of these things go a long way um in the, in the in the long term Thank you so much Radhika for sharing those thoughts. So moving on to our next question which all the listeners will be very eager to know. So what are the challenges while doing the multitasking, right? Which includes doing housework, managing kids, <laughs> handling work, right? And you know fulfilling your personal needs also. So how do you prioritize this entire thing? No no, we'd like to know from you first. Okay, so for me it is um delegate 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 <laughs> <laughs> absolutely really uh every day i tell myself that uh, today i'll be the best version of myself uh am i perfect and do i manage to do that no but like all of us i keep striving to do that to find that right balance between work and family and my me time um so i'm always trying uh, and every day is a new day but yes i keep trying every single day 
And um, I think in my initial years, you know, when the children were much younger, I felt a sense of guilt many a times when I was working. Yes. However, by now I have learned to compartmentalize. So when I'm at work, I work guilt-free 100%. When I'm at home, I'm 100% with my family. So I think this in my case has worked really well. Okay, in terms of multitasking, I think it's really not easy, right? Um, um, I mean, we might make it look easy, uh, but I think it's also important to not beat oneself about it, right? Uh, now, if I'm giving my 200% at work, uh, I'm bound to fall back in my personal life. And I think, uh, but that doesn't stop us from taking on more and more. We constantly take on more than I can chew on. So whether it is, you know, hosting house parties or cooking up an entire, you know, elaborate Bengali meal, or uh, going out dancing and uh, planning holidays. So the other day I planned a holiday for 10 family members, sorry 12, and conveniently forgot <laughs> to book the return tickets for my in-laws and my mom. <laughs> and uh, we obviously the whole deal that I thought I had got four months in advance was had gone for a toss and I we kind of laughed about it. But uh, you know you roll with the blows and I think um, let's not be so hard on ourselves uh, it's it's not easy uh, but we make it look fun absolutely so one curious question how did you deal with that situation which one the tickets yes oh we we had to book it at an exorbitantly <laughs> high price we had no choice although i told my in-laws that you know this was my plan to get you to to you know spend more time wow. together. <laughs> that's a good idea actually yeah but that's not what it was going to our next question radhika uh, given your successful journey do you still believe that there is still long way to go to achieve the gender equality and how do you deal with them? Okay, um, I don't think there's like a long, long way to go. I think we've come, we've come really far from where we used to be. Uh, but do uh, gender biases still exist? Uh, is there stuff that still needs to be done? Definitely yes, right? Um, and I, I would say it's thanks to maybe like 25% of the um, male population that we still have you know certain biases uh, uh, and that women have to constantly watch out for themselves um, and have to face constant you know these um, um, what do you call them remarks or sarcasm in conversations uh, but otherwise um, I think from a from a real perspective there are definitely still a lot of there's a lot of lip service that is done by you know large organizations so during women's day or during mother's Day, you would see these large brands talk about, oh, we value our, you know, we value mm -hmm. mothers. But I think if you just check the ground reality, I think when I was a mother, for example, I think only a handful of companies might have a nursing room, right? I think even after six months, when a, a mm -hmm. mom comes back to work, she definitely needs a private space, right. you know. And it's sad, and it's not just India, right? Even in Singapore, I remember moms having to sit on a toilet seat and express milk. I mean, can you imagine giving your baby something that's, you know, expressed in a, in a toilet, right? So I think a long way for companies to recognize the pain that a woman has to go through. Um, but I think India is definitely doing better in terms of giving six and a half months of maternity and you know things have progressed much more from where they used to be. Uh, but other issues like a gender pay gap, I think a lot of HR heads could evaluate that. If it's a reality, it needs to be fixed. Um, uh, and then the minor biases, I think like, you know, cake cut nai, so they'll definitely call which girl in the room is going to cut the cake. I think these are you know, subtle things, but they're very irritating right yeah. um, and then um, uh, I think stereotyping right yes. let's just cut yes. out the stereotyping I think we just um, have this overhang about gender right it doesn't really matter I mean gender is just a biological thing choices are independent of gender so let's drop the stereotyping a woman can choose to work if she wants she can choose not to work if she wants a man can choose Absolutely. to work if he wants or not work if he doesn't want I think let's stop getting everyone so you know work Worked up and bogged down by gender stereotyped roles. So I think your last statement was very powerful. <laughs> yes. I think if if woman wants to work 
they should work if she doesn't want to work she it's her choice stay. Yeah, yeah it's her it's choice, her choice. Right. so Rana would you like to add for you so I really agree with her um, I feel as far as gender equality is concerned um, like all other equalities be it caste or ethnic it's always a work in progress yeah. uh, well we are at a far better place where we were a few years back where gender equality is concerned but it takes generations to set right the wrong done you know so I think it's going to take time uh, but yes if I look at my career there have been a lot of times uh, in my career when um, and a lot of times in my career when they've said that okay you know um, she's managed to get this deal or she's got this success because she's a woman uh, I completely completely feel very offensive about such statements um, because you know at the end of it I work really hard and I think any woman who faces it should just learn to ignore such things and uh, many women engage in such talk about women as well mm. and I think they should refrain from doing so we are all in the same boat yeah. and there's nobody weak here you've got to fend for yourself and stand up for yourself true true there's, there's one other example and you guys can mix it up but um, you know um, uh, I think period leaves right when mm. this concept got you know spoken about and I was like why do girls nowadays you know talk about all this when yeah. we were growing up we never really we went to work every day and we popped pills and we went to work yeah, but, big day, yeah, yeah. but I think uh, I recognize that now right I think if these younger girls are also teaching us things about you know it's okay if, if we are biological having you know challenged it's okay to take a day off you know in the month and not make a big deal about it so I think we're also learning new right. things from the newer generation mm -hmm. and that's refreshing so thank you so much Rano thank you so much Radhika for sharing your thoughts over here so moving to our next segment which is be going to be a very interesting one is rapid fire so Rano I'm gonna start with you first so here's your first question three traits for succeeding in your domain or your career passion persistence and relationships okay so the next one what is something others find difficult but you find it easy to be gracious so every time I lose a trade to a counterpart I never try and pull them down or bad mouth them interesting so this is gonna be interesting. What food always brings you back to your childhood? Cadbury's Nutties. Wow. <laughs> so I think now Cadbury's can actually have me as their, have me as their brand ambassador. <laughs> so next, what are you learning right now? So I'm learning the trademark recipes of my mother and my mother-in-law mm. and I'm also recording them so I can preserve the legacy. Oh, wow. lovely. One incident that had changed your life? My battle with cancer, um, which actually has made me live each day to the fullest. I thank God for every breath that I take every single day and also cherish my um, family and my friends far more than I think I ever did. Oh, wow. wow. What makes Incred incredible for you? Incred is a company where there is gender equality in the real sense of the word. So when I was given this desk to set up, they gave me full freedom and they have forever had my back and encouraged me to be a better dealer, to be a better person. And I uh, really think to have a promoter like uh, Bupi, who is so dynamic, so driven, fantastic with numbers and knows his subject so well and above all is so ethical, I think makes Incred absolutely incredible for me. Okay, fantastic. So, thank you, Rano. Now moving on to you, Radhika. Oh my God, uh, I'm so, nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so starting with the first question, three tips for succeeding again in your career and your domain. Okay, um, I would say um, attention to detail in execution, um, but at the same time, um, knowing the big picture. And I think third would definitely be, um, no matter which career, right, or which domain, um, don't defend your mistakes, right? right? Mistakes happen, learn from them and move on. Great, great, great learning there. So how do you deal with bullying? 
Oh, <laughs> bullying. Oh, that we've, we've seen that a lot. Yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I think I would say uh, number one, confront the person very honestly upfront, and if that doesn't work, uh, report. <laughs> Okay, so now this is going to be very difficult for you. The next question. What is your favorite designation in the multiple roles you play? Oh my god. Okay. Uh, in your life. So, is it the work designation? Is it daughter, being daughter, wife, mother or sister? Okay. Um... I think mother would come on top, <laughs> right? On Haro, what do you think? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Mother followed by daughter probably, uh, daughter and uh, maybe the work designation somewhere there and, <laughs> and somewhere there. <laughs> and yeah, the last, but I think the last would be wife. Yeah, poor husband. Poor husband. Poor husband. <laughs> actually, so I think major, major. Most of the women will, you know. Yeah. Give it, we, what is the one incident or the weird thing that had happened? during the zoom meeting um, like oh my god okay <laughs> this is this is really funny so i think this is early in the day right when just covid happened mm. and most people didn't know actually how to use zoom and uh, we had a, a, a zoom webinar happening and there was this uncle who logged in <laughs> He didn't realize that his camera is on, and he was sitting in his in his house, topless, uh, <laughs> with the fan whirring. It's a hot afternoon day, and he comes on the screen on camera. I'm like, how do I tell him? Like, you know, this is this is live, and you're on screen. But I think some sense prevailed, and he went off. But I think yeah, a lot of these kind of funny things have happened. That's very weird. <laughs> yeah. So next question: one incident that has changed your life i think losing my father when i was uh, 21 uh, it was like a sucker punch right because uh, mm-hmm. we didn't really see it coming and um, it's just a turning point when you lose someone in your in your you know close family because you start valuing each day so much more you learn to live in the moment and you really realize how petty everything else is Absolutely. right so i think just being happier living fuller telling the ones you love that you love them every day okay so the last question to you radhika what makes incred incredible for you incred incredible um i think um, you know i had till date worked only in very large organizations and um, you know which tend to be generally very mm. traditional legacy ha madam yes sir no sir kind of place and i definitely was looking forward that in my next company culture is going to be very important to me right. um a place which is uh, open minded professional right um um with a very open door policy for everybody and definitely meritocratic and i think incred by god's grace delivered on all of those you know aspects and i think a lot of credit goes to bhupender singh who's our founder ceo and also our hr head kamlesh for i think just inculcating a culture which which is so driven right. uh, but at the same time makes you feel so comfortable right to and i think to what rano said like they've given us complete freedom mm-hmm. to do the things that we want to do right so there's no micromanagement there is no uh, you know you have to follow these certain you know rigid processes or structures we could come and create things the way we thought were right and i think that is an amazing experience for me thank you so much radhika thank you so much thank Radha. you thank you